God and the Word of God. The issues of life, our place in life and station, we need help today. Be with our people that are away in different places, uh, Clinton and Darla, where they are, watch over them. Give them safety and protection each day. In the box. And others that aren't with us, Lord, be with them as well today. So now we just commit this time to you. Come, minister to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. part of the journey. It goes with the journey. So, dry times, low times, heavy times, go with the journey. Go with the journey. It doesn't mean you don't believe God. It doesn't mean you don't have God. It doesn't mean that you've given up on God. It's just a part of the journey, just as surely as anything is a part of the journey. We learn to accept that. Learn to accept periods of time when you don't feel anything of faith and of jumping up and down and Doing miracles, doing miracles. I thought about that as we were discussing Dorcas, Peter coming in. We had a good discussion about why Peter did things the way he did. And I was thinking about Peter. I was thinking, well, you know, I think maybe he just didn't want to put up with all the, the flat when it was all said and done. So he says, you guys wait out here. He knew that. The woman alive was going to be as much of a testimony as if the person watched it happen. So, he just says, wait out here, folks, and uh, I'm going to have prayer. And he just did. You know, Peter wasn't successful all the time. He wasn't successful all the time. He had, he had moments and times when things just didn't go good for him. And so that's okay. It's all right if it happens. Uh, we don't have to say, well, I must not have any confidence in God. No, you just don't feel it all the time. But that don't mean you don't have confidence in the Lord. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah chapter 40, pick up reading at verse 28. Hast thou, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faileth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding? He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail, fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. So, when we have that sense of, uh, boy, I don't know where my confidence is, but it's gone. There are hard things to deal with in faith. There are hard things to deal with in faith. Just like 
this uh, 56 glorious high riding years that we are here and here. For all his fine works and great declarations and proclamations, Brother Paul has probably had about as many dark days in marriage as he's had light ones. But he just didn't tell you. But, which I say, well, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. It's not that you say, well, I'm going to take the high road here and get married. <laughs> it the high road. <laughs> it's just the road. It's just the road. And uh, difficult things come. Difficult things come in the faith. We just don't see them in the beginning. We just don't realize them. And our advisors don't really tell us that it's going to discourage people. But it is. It's just the way it is. The, the way of faith is a hard thing. But what is it about uh, faith? What is the hardest thing about faith for you? You can catalog through the difficulties you might uh, have with faith. And well, what is the hardest thing about it? Uh, I put down several things here that are considerations. One of them, how about living a fulfilling life of devotion to God? Living a fulfilling life of devotion to God. The key word there, that thought, is fulfilling. So how do you get to that uh, stage? Well, I don't know if it's any one particular stage as it is bright moments that come now and then. Bright moments that come now and then. But uh, living a fulfilling life of devotion. Living a fulfilling life of devotion, that's tough to do. That's tough to do. I like that. Who was it? Uh, was that David said, uh, wow, we, we've been up three days trying to work this one out. <laughs> well, that's how it is. That's just the way it goes. We're just going to be working on stuff all along the way. Everybody gets complicated once in a while. Let's put it like this and broaden it up. Everything relational gets complicated. That means we're talking about faith in God. That's relational. And as long as there's an enemy, as long as there's a devil around, as long as this uh, matter of time is upon us, it's going to be difficult. It's going to get difficult. It's going to get complicated. It's going to get almost miserable. But that's just how it is. That's the way the journey goes. You might find it. This is hard to be fulfilled walking the way with God. That's okay to feel that way. Don't stay that way. Don't stay that way. Amen. What do you do when you get hungry? Well, if you're on a diet, you go eat carrots and salad and whatever you do. If, uh, if, you don't, if you're not uh, discriminatory that way, you head to Wayne's like I do. Get diet food, crispy chicken sandwich, a bowl of chili, and a hot chocolate frosty. What do you do? Yeah. You get hungry. We all don't do the same things. But we all take care of the need because that's just how we do. Or you're not going to make it. You're not going to live. Fulfilling. Is a, it's a big word. Fulfilling. You won't always be up here. Fact is, you're going to have less days up here than you are going to have down here. That's not defeatism. Just, that's just how the journey is. But we can learn how to overcome. We can learn how to rise up. We can learn how to feed ourselves. We can learn how to get to that matter of fulfillment to where we are glad, we're thankful, we're grateful that we made the choice we made. Then there's a matter of living and exemplifying the love of God, the power of God in and through you. Maybe that's one of the hard things for you, to live out and exemplify the love and power of God in you and through you. We had a good lesson on that this morning, talking about uh, the, the deeds that Dorcas did and all the good she did. My, that was wonderful. What do you do to live out the love of God, the power of God? There must be some way you do that. Is 
well, I kind of have a hard time with that, all right? That's a confession, but that's good to understand that. Uh, what about exemplifying the power of God and leading others to believe in Christ? You say, well, I'm not a soul winner, neither am I. But you don't quit because you don't feel like you're a big soul winner. How about an influencer? Are you an influencer? You say, well, uh, kind of. No, you're not just kind of. You're a big influencer. It just may not be in a way that you understand. So the Lord help us. All these issues are just issues. They're battles. They're problems. But the Lord had something to say about that. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings, run, not be weary, walk, and not think that. That's pretty, that's pretty way up to it. But that's okay. It's like refueling. It's like refueling. You make a road journey, how far can you go on your tank of gas? Some go 300, some go 400, some go 500. Roger Rinker used to have a vehicle that ran on propane, and he'd go like 500 miles a tank of propane. Yeah, how far do you go? He said, well, you know, boy, I got one of those hogs that only get, I can only make 250 miles on a tank. It's all different, isn't it? It's all, it all varies. It's all different. How far can you go? Well, here's how it is. You only go as far as you can go. See, I told you, this is not deep. It's just how the journey is. And then you refuel, you refine, you get a hold, you freshen up, you fill yourself, you load yourself, you take a drink, you ask for the Lord to come, instead of help you in the way He helps you. A lot of the time, the Lord is going to say to you, help. And a lot of times, if you don't understand, you're going to sit at home and wait for an angel to come and come flying in. And then you're going to set a crown on your head. I'm going to give you a jolt or electricity or something and empower you to run out screaming praise the Lord, hallelujah, and all that. Most of the time I ever got help from God, it wasn't that way. If you did, fantastic. I never did. I never did. Say, well, did you get any help at all? Sure enough, the Lord has a way to help us. So do not be overcome with hopelessness. All of these issues are a great struggle for all true believers in the Son of God. In the fellowship of love is strength gained. In the fellowship of love is strength gained. That's what you got to learn right up off the bat. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Most of the time, most of the time, the help and power and strength that you get from God is going to come through the human agent. The human agent. Be who that may be. Most of the time. Yeah. I never did. Uh, I never did get a letter from heaven directly out of the sky. But I have got letters from people. Then as time went by, I realized it originated in heaven. It originated in heaven. Because it fed me and met my need. The human agent. A most uh, highly unlikely source of help from God. It's going to be your mate if you're married.
give little, you gain little. You give lots, you gain lots. In the fellowship of love, in the fellowship of believing, in the fellowship of faith is where much power is to be gained, much strength is to be found, much leadership is to be given in the fellowship of faith. Somehow, some way, we're losing our grip on in the fellowship of faith. They that wait on the Lord. You know what it would do a lot of us a lot of good? I take it you fast once in a while. Why don't you fast your electronics? Yeah. Because we're starting to substitute real and true fellowship and connection by electronics. Yeah. Fast it. Set it all aside for an hour. Two hours, a day. <clears throat> I didn't say blow it up and get rid of it. I said fast it. And then find some real connection. Living, moving human beings. In the fellowship of love is strength gained. For whatever reason, the generations that come after us, church is not as important anymore. It isn't. It's not something people really take a burden for and fight for. It's just not. I'm not condemning it. I'm saying it's the day we live in. It's the emphasis we live in. It's the things that are upon us that are eroding away the relational power of God's people. Amen. You know, what's better? What's better? Or wait, 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 let me text you. You might like that better. Hi, Paul. How are you? Oh, appreciate you. My, you look good today. Did you feel that? He didn't feel anything. He didn't feel anything because I didn't send him anything. Let me ask you this. Is that connection? like that versus 1% of meeting together in the fellowship of faith and love and you're not gaining the kind of strength and power that you need as a human being. Amen. You know, our day is separating us. Yeah. I'm not against it. I own the toys and utensils too. I enjoy them thoroughly. What I can understand. What I can understand. I understand very little of these goofy things. I'm at the bottom of the totem pole for knowing how to play all these things. But I'm not against it. I'm not preaching against utensils and toys and technology. What I'm saying is, if we allow the fellowship of faith, the fellowship, the connection, the togetherness of human beings, one to one, in presence, real time, we lose something in spiritual. Amen. We got to learn how to uh, maneuver this so that we can keep the strength, the fellowship of love. Amen. 
If you never see me at all, but I contact you, you never really get a sense of where I'm at, and I don't really get a sense of where you're at. Yeah. My, uh, my fellow board members know. I've talked to them and told them. I'm, well, I'm not comfortable being online like you do. But there's a reason for that. We are undermining, we are undermining the strength of the church. If it only becomes that. We have to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. You can't, we can't. We got a generation of children that will never understand the power and the value of being together in the worship and the spirit of the faith if we don't teach them to do that. In the fellowship of love is strength gained. Is strength gained. I go away from Sunday times regardless of uh, how much I've smiled or not smiled or what I've said or how I've said it. I always go away from our times together having gained within me. Everybody gives according as what they are able to give. And that's fine and dandy. But when it's all said and done, and we're on our way home, you either gained enough to feed your soul and spirit, or you left wanting. But that's entirely up to you. Amen. Do not forsake the fellowship of the faith. Do not forsake assembly. Church, gathering, gathering together in the flesh and blood is as important today as it was when I was a boy and as it was before the generations before me. Assembling together. We've got to keep it alive. We've got to keep it meaningful. We've got to keep it powerful. God chose to use the human agent to get his work done. These guys in the Sunday school lesson, they called a man in there. They called a human being in there. Why didn't they call on God and say, send an angel, raise this woman up? No. They felt like their strength was in someone who really close to God, a human agent. Peter called him in. Strength gained. Many looked on that situation and said, oh, praise God, my faith has been rejuvenated by what we've seen happen. I'm moving on, praise the Lord, I'm moving on. I don't know how many people you are responsible for someone saying, well, oh, Aaron can keep believing in God, I can keep believing in God. If James can keep loving the Lord after all these years, I'm, I can stay in this thing. Amen. This is, this is how the Lord is going to quicken us. This is how the Lord is going to strengthen us. Start fasting some things. Don't talk about it. If you do any fasting at all, don't talk about it. And then, he that seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Praise the Lord. The Lord's trying to help us, folks. The Lord's trying to help us. Amen. The believers must continue in fellowship. Why is that? Well, there are several things here. We'll take a few minutes. One, in fellowship, in the love of God, the believers inspire one another. They inspire one another. Amen. Most of our group here that uh, we've been in fellowship with now for at least five years, I've seen you do things. I've watched you do things that I can't do. I've watched you attempt things that I would never dare try. But that's inspiring. That's inspiring. Amen. 
I watched my children do things that I never would have dared even think about them. They just jump in there and do it and run away with it. It's inspiring. We should inspire one another. Did you ever think that uh, the children that are now adults and doing adult things, did you ever think that that's what they would be and do? They say, well, I confess, it was kind of hard to imagine. Think about the uh, little guy back there, the youngest one. Can you see him doing anything? Humor. 
Sergeant. Our children have rough days. We go and talk to them. Help the family. Frank had a few rough days. You see, that's what we do. We lift one another. We lift one another. We lift one another. We learn to lift one another. We teach our children to lift one another. We teach our children to care about people. My children care about people more than I ever did at their ages. We teach lifting one another. In the fellowship of love and the fellowship of faith, as we wait on God, we respect one another. We respect one another. We allow one another to be what we are. You be what you are, I'll be what I be. We respect that. Try to be as considerate as we know how. We'll keep working on it. Back when our kids were little, sometimes other kids beat up on my kids. And then other times my kids were bumping on other kids. I tried to teach them this. I said, now listen, don't go looking for fights, but if someone's going to be, you know, really raising pain with you, you better rise up and defend yourself. No, not that far. We did tell him, though. I said, listen, if you have to defend yourself, defend yourself. Do what you got to do, but don't go looking for trouble. But don't let people just run all over you either. Respect. Respect. Authority. I like what one of my sons said the other day about uh, some disciplinary problems that go on in our world. They said, uh, he says, you know, uh, what that uh, little one needs is to run into the brick wall called Dad. <laughs> yeah. We've been out on reservations, lots of reservations, and seen lots of wild Indians. And what a lot of those little wild Indians needed was to run into the brick wall called Dad. <laughs> Respect authority. Respect authority. <clears throat> they learned that little. And we keep working on it. Respect. God's people respect one another. God's people empower one another. Praise the Lord. Empower one another. We'd go away feeling like we can pray and get results. We'd go away praising God with meaning. We'd go away thinking there is hope. There is answers to prayer. There is power to be gained. We empower one another in the fellowship of love, is strength gained as we wait on God, as the believers wait on God. We teach one another as we worship together. We teach one another as we worship together. We teach one another about one another, about ourselves, about the faith. You know something? Everything I know about the faith, I learned from somebody else. And then refined it as I walked with the Lord. As I walked with the Lord, I understood it better, learned it better, understood it better, and taught it better. But I learned it from somebody else first. Amen. We teach one another. You, some of you have had experiences uh, I've never had. You can teach me. You've been there and done that. You've been there and been that. You can teach me. I learn from everybody. You're not too old to have young friends. Where did I hear that? Where have you heard that? Oh, I don't know. You just heard it. You're not too young to have old friends. I heard that one in the reverse. Tickled me. You're never too old to learn. You're never too old to learn. Keep learning. Keep learning. And when you're young, keep learning. We teach one another. 
That's how we teach one another. Praise the Lord. We keep pliable, workable. In the fellowship of love. So, all of these things are included in that way of the Lord. Way of the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, walk, and not faint. Run and not be weary. You know, when I first read those words, I thought, well, I guess I'll go up here and, and uh, sit on the bluff and wait for this to happen. The Lord said, I run and not be weary. I wait like he works and, and I'm going to get strong. And I'm going to wait here on the bluff until he comes. Actually, nothing happened until I went back down in the fellowship of faith and started mingling with God's people. And then I started to get what I was looking for. Amen. We are valuable to one another, folks. We're valuable, supremely valuable to each other. We dare not forsake the fellowship of the faith, the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. So, don't go away and say, I say, I said, destroy all of your technology. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said, fast it. Fast it for an hour, two hours, a day. Fast it. And get back to the way that God wants to strengthen, nourish, encourage, help, minister, teach, reach. Amen. Well, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the Word of God. Lord, we wait on you. Nevertheless, our hearts are open for the means, the method, the people, the love of God, all the things you want to do yet in this world. And we pray that you will get them done, Lord. We've got lots of relatives that need saved. We've got a lot of friends that need encouragement. We've got a lot of people with needs that need help right now today. We go trusting and Lord, we go fellowshipping together in the name of Christ and in his spirit. Amen. Amen.